Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. This is a show where we aim to educate, inspire and entertain through real life stories and interviews from people in the Scottish property community. As always, thanks for listening and give us a follow on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to join us at our monthly networking events on the first Wednesday of every month. Tickets are available on our website. So without further ado, we'll just cut straight into this week's podcast. Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast, Andrew McGee. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. As I was saying before, um, I've been watching it for quite a while, uh, past couple of years, even back in the, the Zoom kind of days. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I was saying to my missus, it's like watching the wrestling and you get to meet Stone Cold and the Rock. No, it's good to have you in here and obviously thanks very much for the support. It's always good. To, I always say at the networking events as well, you know, when we have a room full of 60 people, it's great to meet everybody in person and then get the community on the podcast as yeah. well and see what you're yeah. up to. So I'm going to share your story here today. Brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I need to get to an event to be fair. I've not done one of them yet. Oh, oh mate. Oh, I know, fuck. I know. Wait, wait, would, would you say that interview? interview? It, would be, it, it would be Glasgow <laughs> for right. me, right? Yeah. Um, I know um, so Paul. He doesn't pushes, need the sales, mate. Paul, Paul pushes the Edinburgh uh, ones like crazy. You know what I mean? But I, need to, I want to go to Glasgow. Ignore Paul. <laughs> just <laughs> any, any messages. I bet you have the DMs coming in, don't you? Constantly, constantly. Come on, come on through Edinburgh. WhatsApps, WhatsApps. I've got a bet on with Nick. I can sell more seats. I mean, Paul is an actual genius for fucking sales, like he's relentless. He's doing well, to be fair, yeah. he really boosts his numbers mm-hmm. in Edinburgh, but he's on to me. He's, 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 beat, he's, he's actually beating Glasgow numbers, which is fucking oh, really? I, I heard but of that. He's trying to challenge me to some, some challenge for charity or something, like right. some bet where he, oh. he can get more people. He's, he's called out publicly, going to hit the next step. He's going to step the game up in <laughs> that step up now. I says, look mate, I says, maybe we'll do that, aye, we'll, we'll get around to it. I've not got much time for that at the moment, but I will. <laughs> but no, he's, he's but, highly driven. Yeah. Aye. So it'd be, it'd be Glasgow one you're your new one. It would be, I, yeah. I only stay in Bottle, so I'm no a million miles yeah. away, you know. So definitely the Glasgow Is that one. where you Is grew that? up? No, no. So I grew up in uh, Deniston, um, a right. place called Hag Hill, which is uh, east end of Glasgow, kind of Skag Hill. Shitty bit of Glasgow, to be fair. Nah, it's good um, now, by the way. I'm trying See, to buy well, there now. But for investment, mm-hmm. um, it's brilliant. We've got a few flats around there that absolutely fly, you know, like one bedroom's mm. going for £800 a month and stuff. The, the rental prices there are great, you know, mm. and that, that's the thing. Obviously, I, I, I grew up there. Um, and just a set of flats back then. I didn't even obviously think about that kind of thing, you know. But then moved up towards uh, Lanarkshire. We stayed out in uh, Newark Hill for quite a while. Um, mm-hmm. And then only moved to Bothell in 2019 with my wife now, with my missus at the time. So first big house. Bothell, is that the posh area? That's the thing. That's, that, that's, yeah, see, that's, see, that's the problem. Even see when the you fucking say, <laughs> the fucking know it's Bothell the posh area. See, see when you say Bothell, you go, oh, have you stayed there all your life? And I'm like, nah, fuck nah, it, honestly. No, I, was, I was in Shitsville I, getting I'm tins of stew <laughs> handed up to me when I was a kid, you know. <laughs> that, that EU stew, if you ever remember that. <laughs> we get, uh, this, this was like, EU stew. I, I must have been about maybe three or four, but I wind my mom up about this all the time, right? So, where we stayed, there was a wee Blue Veil Hall, and it was... Which street was it in Hag Hill? Dunraggett Street. Right. Right, so you've got the Blue Veil Hall there, and the those that were on lesser incomes and all that got this stew, right? There must have been mass-produced oh. hundreds of thousands of cans, right? So my dad stayed right around the corner. My dad and I stayed together. Stayed right around the corner. My dad was a bit of a lad, just wheeling and dealing, stuff like that, right? So he's... Uh, Legally. So he's uh, <laughs> he, he's like that. I'm going to get in and I'm going to get far more of this stew, right? I'm no fucking kidding you. We had tins shelves of this stuff. I was having stew birthday cake, stew breakfast, uh, stew dinner. Is it in tins? It was tins, right? It was, and like, you know, it was like spam, like the tins of spam. It, it was just stew, but right. the, it was like European Union, just blue can with a big EU on it, right? It was probably <laughs> radioactive, right? But the thing I remember about it that, that really, really... Uh, stuck in my mind was this was like 94 and the best before date was like 2012 and I'm going there's fucking something in that <laughs> you know what I mean in that. so we, we were we were pushed all that kind of stuff um, so uh, I we weren't uh, there uh, so some so ultra there's, processed so there's, there's, there's there, bairns going about in the Niston area with fucking three heads and it absolutely like, uh, absolutely uh, the uh, radioactive <laughs> uh, I don't remember that but I, I didn't I grew up in a better position I don't than think that, you used to reach the highlands <laughs> it's funny, like I, it's funny when you think about the upbringing and stuff that you had growing up like that. Cause yeah. I remember getting a fucking remember the lunch vouchers you used to get for getting your school mm-hmm. meals. Yeah, yeah, I was that embarrassed because my friends couldn't do it. I had to go mm-hmm. and make an excuse. I was going up to the shitter mm-hmm. until they pissed off into the chippy, so I can go into the, the canteen to get your, your your chips and then walk out with your chip piece. But then you've been the chippy. You, you could kind of, I think you could kind of 
it, it got to a stage where you could kind of realise like those that maybe their mum and dad worked and had cars and like yeah. nice cars and stuff like that. And then you just realise, look, this is a position you're in and then you just have to figure it out, you know. But for me, when I moved to New York Hill, I was eight year old when I moved there and my mum met a guy and moved up. And I don't know, I was just I was just really um focused on like business for a young uh, age and things like that. Um I remember being like thirteen and I kinda got my act together a wee bit just in terms of no hanging around with the local mm. idiots and this and that and started training, exercise, uh, fitness has obviously been a big yeah. part of part of my life. Started boxing when I was about thirteen and then just got really into business. Started my first wee business at sixteen. Uh what was that? Ebook education, it was called, <laughs> right? So I had this kind of niche where I was like, everybody's into ebooks. You're talking two thousand and six, right? Mm. Ebooks were a big thing. I was like, I can buy all these ebooks, create a wee website set them up so i done that when i was like 15 16 made zero fucking sales obviously <laughs> zero sales you know um but i'd always had that kind of inclination that i wanted to invest and yeah. i was trying to get in the stock market and stuff when i was younger um anybody around you that was doing it anybody around you that was influencing you or you just you knew that <laughs> no and i think that that's probably been a bit of a theme uh, for my life growing up so like even for a sports standpoint I started boxing competitively boxing's a very singular sport yeah, you know yeah. it's no like I, I, I didn't like football nah. I played football a wee bit didn't like football boxing competitively with that fought at light welterweight which is 10 stone if you can believe I was ever 10 stone in my life <laughs> hey, uh, back some of these archive pictures <laughs> mate, I do not believe I'll get, I'll get these flagged up I I, and one leg's 10 stone now but um, then moved into like competitive bodybuilding yeah. which is a singular sport probably uh, one of the most competitive bodybuilding so, right. is that so, what you so, get all like oiled and tanned up now uh, so I, I, I uh, Graham McCaig he does that don't he do you know Graham we had uh, him on there I, I had competed for 2008 so I was 18 um, stop boxing. Uh, kind of realised getting punched in the head all the time is a bit of a problem. It's good for stop, business. <laughs> for business, <laughs> uh, just for general day to day. Uh, started bodybuilding and then was competing like for maybe five or six years doing that. Um, and fitness was always my passion and my mm. love, you know. And I was working on a building site, and I remember probably like a, a million other people that are in the same position. I remember being on the building site and not really enjoying it day in and day out, but then speaking to people who have been doing it for 30, 40 years and they're still Don't coming to work the on the Monday shit. and they're going, this is shite, this job's shite. Oh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, what, what one guy that was retired at 65 came back at 70 and was working welding in a boiler room talking about how shite it was. <laughs> and I'm probably at this point 20 and realising like, there's no fucking way uh, there's my that future. I'm doing this. Exactly. There's a fucking glimpse to what, that, for me, I didn't make any changes. It, it was uh, that guy specifically. I went, do you know yeah. what? There's no way. There must be another way here. Uh, um, and then that's obviously when I started the the fitness businesses. Right. Um, so I was... What was the first fitness business? Uh, gym and wish I'm no far from here. Hi. Um, 11 years. Uh, 11 years right. ago. So that was 2013, April the, uh, April the 15th, 2013. We opened that one. Um, from my point of view... Then I know anything about running a business. Loved exercise, uh, loved fitness, and just thought, uh, build it and they will come kind of thing. Um, but you go in, you sign a lease for five years, you get all this equipment, this, that, and the next thing, and you're like, oh, shit, I need to learn how to run a business now. How but, did you fund that? Because obviously yeah. there's a quite a... So, so outlay I had... Equipment. To, to give you an idea, I had, um, I had a good job. I was a heating and ventilation engineer. Right. So I just finished my apprenticeship, right? Okay. I wasn't saving any money though. That was the thing. I had a nice big Audi A4, red, loved it, thought it was a business, right? When I and then I ended up wearing this in Almeida within about a month of having the gym, right? So I sold my Audi. Um, I think I got probably about four or five grand for that. I had a Tesco credit card that I maxed out. I think there was maybe about a grand on that, and I'd have eight hundred quid in savings. And the best way I can describe it to you is that first business was built sheerly on long hours uh caffeine and home gym kit mm -hmm. you know we started i really it was a shell and we just get a, a couple of wee bits of kit did you hire the kit or did you just buy the kit in your shell bought, bought it Aye. just bought it sourced it all over the place um i remember i was working i clocked it as 120 hours a week i was working at the time so mm -hmm. i was up at 5 a.m uh doing my training because i was competing at that time for a show 5 a.m uh running in the morning 6.30 start to open this gym and then you're working in that gym for 6.30am till 9pm at night 
and then you're trying to train a wee bit during the day mm. and then you've got posing practice at night and all that. And what made you think, right, I'm going to open a gym here and people are going to come to my gym with the kind of like home equipment rather than go to like pure gym or JDs or something like that? Did you, was it a, a niche that you were focusing on? Uh, uh, I, I sold in the very beginning with just sheer passion, you know? So if somebody was to come in and sit down with me and say, I've been going to the sports centre, I've not been getting any results, I would sit down with you and say, here's exactly what I'm going to do to over deliver. I'm going to do your workouts. I'm going to do your training, your check-ins, blah, 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 all of this stuff. And I guarantee you that you'll get a far better service here. And they're like, brilliant, signed. Yeah. And then you start realising, wait a minute here, you've actually got a business, you know. Um, and then a few months in, uh, say maybe four or five months in, took on first member of staff. Um, and then now for the fitness side of things, we've got uh, a few sites. We've got a fourth site opening up soon. So was that so, first um, one a success then? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So I mean, they're still going. I still aye. open. Yeah. So in in terms What's the name of, of it? Uh, you've got SGF Gym, um, and then you've got Succeed Group Fitness, which is in Rutherglen, uh, Mount Vernon as well. And we've got another site opening as well. Okay. Um, right. But for that, I then moved into the training and education mm. side of things as well. So nice. um, met a guy through the gym. He had 40 years worth of work-based learning, uh, running companies like that. We got together and started delivering uh, training for logistics mm. and drivers good tra- driver training. Um, we the, also did leisure and rec as well. Does the gym business open up a, a network for you for different business owners and different opportunities? I would say massively Aye. so. Massively so. You know, I mean, you're, looking, you're looking at all walks of life that use a gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and you also get to know. It's, mm. it's, it's like anything like martial arts. Yeah. Anything, you really get to know people. You know, yeah. especially if you're running a gym, you get to know their ins and outs. If you're a hairdresser, you'll know somebody's life far better than you will right. probably yeah. their best I remember, friends. I remember you know? being like in my early twenties, mid twenties, say my twenties, I was dead chatty. I used to speak to everybody at the mm-hmm. gym, right? I was probably a pest. <laughs> like everyone the same at forty five. No, 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 this is what I'm like now. I go into my gym now and like I keep my head down. I don't want to yeah. talk to anybody. I don't know. I don't know if I've just become a miserable or bastard. A miserable bastard, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Depends where you train as well. Oh, right. Depends who you train. If you're if you're right. in a community style gym, you're far more likely to get to talk to yeah. the staff and stuff. Um, if you're in a big big corporate scan in scan out, it's a different kind of whole uh, game, you know. Um, David Loy's two hundred sixty pound a month apparently. We just get what that's going to be. By the way, <laughs> it's it's not cheap. I, yeah. I, did, I did look at that recently as well. What's so, uh, as your gyms work on membership basis, did you find that, that was how to scale it up by getting members? So, in? so initially, I initially. Um, we open just a kind of regular open gym. As mm. we've scaled to more sites, we're uh, group training based now. Right. So fully coached sessions, you're not able to just come in and do your own thing. Everything's mm. booked in, everything's session based, stuff like that. Um, and that for so us... Is that you, so you paying attention to the niche of the, the, the fitness industry and the market's going to find aye. out where the, where, like like you're saying, the, the, the scan and then scan out gyms, that's mm-hmm. all there is, but there's not much community based gyms now. Is that the aye. niche now? And, and I think, what you're tend to find in the fitness industry is people will pay more for a better service now than they would have 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, like your budget gyms and things like that, yes, they do have their place. But for us, people are realising if I go to a budget gym, I'm getting no support and I'm not achieving my goals. And then a facility like yours comes in and says, we'll do a full inclusive basis for you here. Mm. Here's our track record. Here's our cost. Yes, it must. it would be more. But this is what you're getting for it. And you're getting results. And you're paying for quality. Yeah. You know, and the, the, the industry in the UK is way behind the US and mm. way behind Australia, right? Mm. But it's starting to come yeah. full well, circle. There's a lot more kind of independent gyms out in like states and Australia. Aye, aye. I mean, Australia, to get an idea, um, the penetration of gym memberships in the UK is about 13%. In Australia, you're talking 40 plus percent. Wow. What, what does know? that mean, sorry? Uh, pe- people who have gym memberships, the UK right. have only got 13%. So... I think there's maybe about 70 odd million people in the UK, Basically only 13% we're a of, of fat those. Bastards. Well, this is the thing. Uh, this is the thing. <laughs> you know, this is the thing. That's quite interesting style, I think. But yeah. it's, it's starting to change, yeah. you know, and you're seeing a lot more of your independence uh, and things like that. So for us, for the fitness side, um, we're looking to scale to 20 sites. That's our mm. kind of key thing, you know. Right. Um, and then throughout Scotland, through Glasgow area, or Scotland and uh, down south as right, well. Right. Um, I've got a friend who he's got thirty odd now nice. um, down south, and they franchise and things like yeah. that as well. You and know. what's your kind of um, like? What's it? USP almost like you know unique. So, so our, our USP is that when you're coming and joining our club, the you don't have to think of what exercises you're doing. You don't have to think of your nutrition. You don't have to think should I do this out the next thing. We're taking care of all of that. Aye. You know, and we're taking care of all of it on a group training basis. So you're getting to know people, you're bonding with people, 
and you're also then getting results. You're getting that accountability with the mm-hmm. check-ins and such. Whereas if you just go to a gym, you're like, oh, what exercises will I do today? So it what becomes do like today? that community as well that we're talking about. It's a, it's a far more personal touch, you know? Right. Um, and I feel as though we're on a bit of the cusp of the fact that it's just starting to yeah. grow that way in the UK, you know? Um, and then obviously, as I said, through the, the gyms, um, started the training academy business. Um, we've got uh, modern apprenticeship programmes that we run through Skills Development Scotland, uh, deliver SQE qualifications all throughout Scotland as well. So we would put apprentices in like your DW, your Nuff Fields and things like that. We've got contracts through with them. Right. Um, and then the same from the logistics side of things as well. Nice. You know? so you've, got quite, you've got quite a lot of plates spinning here at the one time. I'm and that's like, without the property stuff. Oh, we'll get, we'll get <laughs> on to that. But yeah. like, where's, where's most, what's a day, kind of typical week look like for you then? Where are you focusing most of your attention? So I'm a, I'm a big fan and a big believer of systemizing these businesses massively. I feel as though that's really how you can scale and grow. Mm. I think if you were to speak to the majority of just gym owners, they're doing a load of time on the gym floor. They're mm-hmm. still doing 40, 50 hours. They're still coaching people. They're still doing things like that. I was doing all that in the beginning for the first maybe five years, but then I realized I need to learn the skills of running a business, mm-hmm. you know? So um, the fitness business, uh, I don't, I've, I've got maybe five, six hours a week I spend on that. I've got a great team with there. I've got great managers, great area managers that do really well. They grow and expand that. I'm just either looking for new sites to take on board um, or other opportunities. Um, the training academy business, probably spend about a day or two on that just now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really just meeting employers, seeing what they're doing in terms of their training for the logistics, mm-hmm. you know, so all of those are driving vans, things like that. A lot of the time you go out and speak to them, you say, um, what kind of formal training or qualifications have you put your staff through? Oh, they've got driving licenses. And you go, well, here's the problem. Um, let's say as an example, as an employer, if I've not done any formal training and my guy goes out and hits somebody and kills them, the mm-hmm. judges are then going to go, what did you do to ensure that that person was fully upskilled and qualified? Did you do anything as an employer to safeguard that? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, they've got a driving yeah, license. The past okay. 17. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So in that case then, we're going to look at you for corporate manslaughter. Mm. You know, and when you start mm. to then realise, no, 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 there's other things, as with everything, with property and everything, there's legislation that comes in and there's stuff that has to be put in place. And that's where we really come in and we can provide that. And because, so you've got a business partner on, on that side of things? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Is Piers, he more kind of like operational day-to-day kind of? Yeah, so he's... His full gig was, um, and still is, the fact that he's got so much experience in it, you mm-hmm. know? So Peter's 62, 63 now, and he's been doing that all his days, you know? He's been a director of big, big companies um, in the logistics sector in the UK, and his whole thing is that he's got the understanding and contacts. I then came in and was able to write the qualifications mm-hmm. and do the delivery and systemise it. Um, so I spent probably about two days roughly doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, say a day on the gym side of things and then as of 2024 my key is that I want to really push the property side of mm-hmm. things so I'm like I need to spend more time in this yeah, because which, is why, which is what brought you in here today yeah, so. exactly because yeah. I think like probably a lot of people um, you become a landlord and you go I'll just buy a house and you go alright that's it I'll buy another house next year mm-hmm. I'll buy another house next year but when you really get into plug the this as wealth and things like yeah. that you realise that wait a minute here there's a massive opportunity to have mm-hmm. this as a business, mm-hmm. you know. So that's mm-hmm. where this year I'm like, I need to scale and grow this more, you know. So, so what was it? What, what got you started in property, and what was it that kind of sparked the first interest where you're where you were growing businesses? So first property I bought was um, 2014, so ten years ago now. Um, I had the gym business for just over a year, and I'd maybe say eighteen months at that point. Um, started making a wee bit of money, and I was like, right, okay. Um, the business is running well. What can I spend my money on? You know, at that point, I wasn't thinking about scaling things. Um, you didn't buy another Audi. Didn't buy another Audi. <laughs> I, I still had a wee shitty car at that point. And I was fine with it. Uh, but I was like, what can I? What can I invest my money on? Going back to that whole mindset of when I was a kid investing in stocks and such. And I was like, property seems to make sense everywhere. Um, like everybody, read your rich dad, poor dad, listen mm-hmm. to podcast, audiobooks, things like that. Um, and decided, fuck it, I'll try and find an investment property. Um, all of my friends, all of my family, everybody around me, ah, it's really risky. Oh, yeah. What mm-hmm. if you get a bad tenant? Oh, I heard about such and such. I heard about such. Aye, okay. Are you with your wife at this time? Or your- no, uh, oh. I hadn't met my missus at this time. 
No, so no. we uh, we met 2015. So mm. this was just before it. Uh, um, so you were just listening. I mean, did you just shut everybody else out and just continue, or did you did they put doubts in your mind? Or no, really, no, really, because when I was going to open the gym, everybody says it was yeah. ropey, and when I was going to start bodybuilding, nobody else was doing that, and they said it was gay yeah. you know <laughs> and, uh, you know what i mean like it's 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 been a constant theme where i go and do something because i want to do it and it's like oh what about so i thought screw it i'll, I'll go and get my first uh, property um managed to get our, our, our so lucky looking back in this but i got a cracking deal i got a two-bedroom end terrace in bodwell for right. eighty thousand two hundred, right. and just get that revalued at 165 nice. um, there you go capital growth yeah. ca ma massive yeah. capital growth <laughs> Um, great property in terms of rental wise mm -hmm. as well as you can imagine you know um, rents are now for about 850 great property Aye. probably could bump that up based on what's going on but it's rented from day one Aye. and I bought it rent already you know so yeah. that was my first thing was get that first property and then from there I just realised right I need to start doing more of this mm -hmm. this is this is insane that I'm making money for this this is another business. There's, th there's still cash though, right from off that one in Buffalo, then, right? Absolutely. Uh, aye, aye. So, uh, as in cash purchase, sorry? Yeah, no, sorry. There's still cash flow. Yeah, yeah. Aye, yeah so, you still absolutely. made money off it. Because e even yeah. back then, um, I know the rates are kind of no great just now, but back in 2014, the rates were pretty decent, yeah. you know? Um, and it was a, a, a letting agent that's no longer uh, a letting agent anymore, just up the road for it, that took mm. it on board and they were managing it and things like that. So I was like, this is very hands-off. Yeah. You know, I'm not having to put in 120 hours a week, like yeah. running the gym. I can do this and scale this. Mm. But then you kind of realise over the years, I was doing it in maybe a bit of the opposite way, yeah. where you're just buying a property, saving up money, Get buying on. the next property. Yeah. Not even thinking <clears throat> of refinancing, because again, I didn't have anybody mm. around me yeah, you didn't to know, guide me. You didn't yeah. understand like the power of leverage and mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. you can do to raise the, the values and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the thing. I was just buying rent already, getting a tenant in and then saving the money to get the next one. Mm. So I've maybe done it slow. Yeah. But then it's established. So then so from the Buffer one, did you, where, were the, where was the next one? Similar kind of area? Similar? Uh, next one was in Craig Nuke. Right. Um, so stone throw away from the, the gym. The gym was in Craig Nuke. Um, probably literally say maybe quarter of a mile away for that no. that came up that was a uh, fixed price right. um fifty seven thousand. uh it was a local flooring uh company that was selling it um so they'd done it brilliant inside rent already great flooring as you can imagine i went in put the offer in got it got it tenanted yeah. boom great and then i started buying just wish or like wish or wish or wish or yeah, yeah you know um, just i say 25 percent deposit bomb it in exactly it it. so it's like oh great Aye. like everybody oh i've got tens of thousands in my account Next day after the sale, oh, I've got Fucking 40 pence. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, good, I've, good I've way just, to do uh, it. I'm just having to pay my corporation tax this month there, and I'm like, uh, looking at it, I'm thinking, I'm not making a lot of money out here, but it's like, obviously, a lot of mines have come to end of fixed rate right. mortgages and that, so a lot yep. of them have bumped up because the rent freeze and all the rest of it. A lot of the rents have fallen behind on long-term tenants. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to need to do something. But I, I imagine need... based on last year's acquisition performance that this year you need to be buying quite a lot. Oh, based no. on a... Well, look at... <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I will. I mean, I need to spend the money on something, right? Because yeah. there's probably about 300 grand now sitting doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I need, to, I need to spend on something. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know which route to go, uh, whether it'll go down. I want to buy a commercial building, mm -hmm. do, okay. like, a CMO thing. Yeah. Uh, I want to get a few more space. I want to get a few more buy to lets, but I'm I'm quite fussy about my buy to lets. In what way? They need to be in good areas. I mean, I would buy something in Hag Hill, for example. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the shit. I mean, I I put a call out to sourcers and I've said, look, sourcers, a couple have DM me on that on Instagram, mm -hmm. and the shite that I get sent, man. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's just I wouldn't buy it. You know, it's got to be um, something that's going to go up and cap. You know, like you're talking mm -hmm. about that Boswell mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Something that's going to go up value because mm -hmm. i'm looking really at long term but they're decent stock yeah Aye, so yeah. i'm quite i'm quite picky that way so i think that's probably why i've not plus i've been focused on obviously building like an agency and stuff like that and doing but, that but, but see the thing is right and this is something that um obviously i've heard you talk about this in the past as well see the fact that you have been spending that time mm -hmm. to build the business yeah. in that past year it's not necessarily a bad thing nah. no because at the end of the day like I, i'm not thinking so about that yeah. getting people yeah, I know, honestly, you, say, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you do fuck on property mm -hmm. what right have you got to <laughs> run a property podcast yeah. you don't buy any properties yeah. David Hutton was <laughs> like, <laughs> the way I see the businesses that's an asset in itself yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. I could sell my lighting agency probably for about I don't know 400k or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. 
Aye. And you know, and, like, and you're you're building a business in which case you've got a couple of different options. You sit back and you go, do I look at exiting this at some point? Right. And then if I want to put say maybe fifty percent of the money into residential or commercial property, I can. But the fact you're building that asset from where it is to where you want to take it is yeah. the key thing. And I'm not really in any rush John, either. John I, Morrison said uh, Morrison asked a phenomenal deal in Glasgow in the group chat yesterday. I'll have right. to fucking ping it on here. I think I've seen that. Uh, really good disc and really good stock. Mm, I've, I've, I've been going back with him and forth mm. quite a wee bit with some stuff, you know. Uh, the, obviously, the good thing is there's, there's people in there actively selling, and yeah. obviously, him with the auction house is a, is a good contact, you know. Mm. I'm just, I feel like I'm just quite happy in my life as it is, so I'm not really in any huge rush, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? To invest, I will keep investing over time. Now I'm looking at watches. I just pay, just pay mm-hmm. the, with the money you got in the bank. Could do, the as well, for an, an easy life, eh? uh, could do, but just. I, I think I think as well though, like as much as I, I've been guilty of this in the past, is that you get a business, you build a business, or you get the properties and you build it. I've also planned out where I want to be in five years, mm-hmm. ten years, and the position I want to be in, and what why I'm really doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, now I, I had a daughter in 2024. Uh, sorry, 2020, uh, 2022, 22nd to the fourth, 22. Yeah. That's I've pulled that back there. <laughs> uh, but then things just change. Yeah, you yeah. know, you both of you guys. Fathers, yeah. three kids, mate. Right, yeah. so I, I remember, I, I remember uh, my missus ended up having to go and get seen and this and that, and I've I've got the wee kiddo and uh, build me up buttercups playing the background. It was cinematic as fuck looking back on it, right? So I've got this wee way and I'm looking and I'm like, I would burn all the houses, burn all the businesses, and blow up the Range Rover just to make sure you're happy. Yeah. And see, at that point, I was like, ah, wait, there's something different in this year. Mm-hmm. I'm building and growing that for her mm-hmm. so when i then get another house i'll i go i go always going to say to her oh you've just she got i know right. oh, you've just bought right. another house here you've just bought another house there actually she doesn't know because you're not going to see the fucking benefit exactly <laughs> see the benefit exactly you know and that for me as much as i've got numbers and such yeah, that i want to hit that sounds like you're still going through the honeymoon period where you're waiting <laughs> wait, wait till you get three and wait till you go you're holding the third one you're going i can't wait to fucking get out of here <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm going to work see you later that's a fair point that's a fair point aye. next next like putting the red panties on for the podcast days like thank <laughs> fuck i'm at the house of the day <laughs> but perspective will change again out? still one yes oh, yes easy life my, my, my thing is i'll probably have another kid that's my thing you know yeah. but um Aye, my Enjoy perspective it. might change as she becomes a teenager no, and such, wrong. you know. It's, uh, yeah, we, 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 middle one is uh, just been diagnosed with ADHD as well. So oh, well, right. we are uh, going through a situation where we were on the medication now as well. So mm-hmm. it's totally turned everything upside down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, it's uh, like you say, exactly to your point. Other things become more priority. Yeah, yeah. Massively uh, so. Massively so. so. That, you know, mm-hmm. one of the things was building the business. The other thing is family issues as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Family issues take priority. And and I think I'm a big believer of, as much as building businesses and such is great, I'm also a big believer of trying to, like everybody, trying to balance the right things, mm-hmm. right? So I'm, priority? I'm no interested in, and I've got friends that do, but I'm no interested in working 20 hours a day and no see my kid yeah. for two weeks right mm. on the flip side i'm also no interested in building a business to let my health go under yeah, and ending yeah. up four five six stone overweight and then starting to change my habits. so i try and get the basis where i'm looking after myself mm-hmm. i'm looking after those around me but i'm also then building these things as well you know so Aye. it's it's where you put your energy yeah. you know and i think people get bogged down with oh, i need to buy so many houses or i need to grow the yeah. business or oh, i can only spend family time let's try to get all yeah so where have you got to now in the portfolio have you got a few buy to lights how many have you got now so i've got 11 just now oh, um in terms of um number wise that's that's what i said to Stephen as well recently so i'd, I'd got uh nine of them uh just valued there so um there was eight two five on there and then two hundred thousand as well so i'm a quote-unquote seven figure landlord with one million 25,000. Get, get, get out there, my accountant hates property and he keeps turning around and going, aye, but remember you all this? And I'm like, aye, but just stick with me, you know what I mean? Um, but my, my kind of... Wait, I need to look at your Instagram to see if you've actually put that on your... No, 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 no that's my problem. It's just all pictures of my Wayne and training. Oh, right. um, but my, my kind of key thing is, is that I want to scale... Initially, I said I wanted to get 30 by the let's by the age of 40. Yeah. I'm 33 the now, so I've got a wee bit of time. But now I'm looking at it and going, I want 100 units, right. I want 150 units, I want to really make a push at this. And only because I see what's possible, yeah. you know? Mm. Like, you see guys um, throw out a couple of names, like you're, you and Dudden, mm. you know? Never met him before in my life, but the guy's 
flying. Just scale, you know? just going for it. But it's scaling, like, it's going like for it. It's the things that you put your focus and your attention on until you can really did focus on Did you not have you in the other well. week there when I was off? I did, I, yeah. I had to take a sick day. I had to take yeah. a sick day for the Again, podcast. Again, fam- family priority, priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you had you in yeah. uh, you in. I agree. Interesting to hear that. Yeah. But, but that's the thing is, Hopefully you see what's fucking, possible. Hopefully I carried you all right, mate. Hopefully I carried I'm it. I'm sure you did. So. <laughs> <laughs> we probably, this is it. When I'm off, at least he can get a word in. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you keep getting it. Uh, you I, keep getting it. I'm, I'm terrible. You know, I, feel, I felt fucking, <laughs> it was quite weird. I just sit there and like, Pause and, not, and I'm like, oh fuck! Next <laughs> door he then dropped me. I'm like, oh shit! I need to go and say, I need to go on the next question. Just, just PTSD. You keep looking like, like that. Way what is he? I was like, looking at looking at this Sometimes little. Sometimes you must feel like, shut up, you fuck, so I can get a word. <laughs> I, I like this question. I like this as all. Well. But but um, that that's the thing is you you see what's possible, and then also from my point of view, I want to also take the attributes that I've learned in building businesses yeah. and put that into the property, you know, and mm-hmm. start to employ staff and grow it and 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 take it down a route where it is a scalable yeah. business as well. Rather than just acquiring the assets, I'd like to build it into mm. a business, you know? Um, and that's that's, that, that's a plan. That's a, that's an inter- interesting point, actually. And it's something that myself and Ewan spoke about a lot. I think his podcast is out next week or the week after. Mm. And it was when he was on it, I think he got up to 25 properties and he's pretty much bought another 25 or fucking 50. I don't know what he's at. Mm. It's almost like huge mm. scale up. But it was at that point we were talking about... Um, What's the growth? Because the growth's got to be in staff and teams, and absolutely, it's, it's like you're you're kind of coming at it from a different point of view. Of, you've learned the skill and how to build a build business. Mm-hmm. Assets are getting plugged into it as you've went. Now you can actually scale up a business with business skills. I'm doing it the yeah. fucking opposite way. I'm phenomenal at property. Yeah, I don't know the fuck. I'm now having to go and learn myself how to run a business now. Yeah. Go, this is about business. Do you, do you do you employ maintenance staff? Do you employ <sighs> management? Do you employ like you know where's where's the growth in the team now? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think you're I think you're absolutely right. I think that's where people are probably become unstuck and go, I'm going to get to 15, 20 and go, mm-hmm. right, that's me at the limit because mm-hmm. I'm busy as fuck running this yeah, property yeah. business as long as my job or my other businesses yeah. and family life, that's mm-hmm. my limit. Whereas, mm-hmm. like you say, with a bit of systems and property, you can scale this really, really big. Ma- massively. And I think getting that foundation initially is is mm-hmm. the key, you know, because you look at it, obviously you're letting agents side of things as well, Nick. You employ staff, you get people yeah. there. Every member of staff is generating you X amount mm-hmm. of cash. You know, asset, yeah. and that is as simple as that. You know, if you look at your business, how much business, how much revenue that business brings in, and divide that, say, as a rough by how many staff you've got, every single member of staff is worth X to you. Mm-hmm. So if you can ensure, right, okay, if I can push that and scale that and upscale those people, get them to another level, then that's going to grow my business. You know, your your business Absolutely. is only as good as the people around you. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, and and that is so important. Like you said, I talked about you've got a manager and running the gyms and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's difficult to get yeah. somebody who cares. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're not there, yeah. People can be taking the piss, doing mm-hmm. anything. And and staffing's always going to be the toughest part, I would say. It's it's I'm I'm brilliant with spreadsheets and numbers and no emotion, right? Mm-hmm. Serial killer, right? Spreadsheets, numbers, yeah, no emotion, right? Cool head. But when I'm dealing with staff, but, I had to bring in somebody that's yeah. good with people. Yeah, you know, right. in my area manager, he's been with me for eleven years. He's brilliant. Right. He's often paternity than now, but he's um, other than that. But he's he's he's, 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 he's brilliant. <laughs> like, right? When are you getting back right. to work? Three weeks. What you thought of it? <laughs> um, so he's he's amazing because he said to me, we, we went out for a night at Christmas time, and he said the way it works really well with me. He says you're a wee bit more ruthless, not in a bad way. He said, but you're a wee bit more ruthless, but I'm able to portray what you're trying to say mm. in the right way mm. to those around you know and that that's really what you need you yeah. really need if you're if you're scaling the business you need a solid number two mm-hmm. you know if yeah, you've got a solid number two that just knows you inside out then sky's the limit you know right. no that's, really that's good advice um it's just like you say it's, it's always going to be an issue find, find it's always it. the hardest part uh, mm-hmm. your loan to value must be really good on the portfolio because you've kind of done it <laughs> You, you can say slow, but mm-hmm. there's different different strokes for different folks, isn't it? What was mm-hmm. it on? Um, you saving up a, your own deposit, your own income from the business, putting in a deposit and, and capital appreciation and buying a decent area is go. Yeah. Your own money's locked in it. Your loan to value must be freaking okay then. Yeah. Then, that, you can, that you can now go, I'm going to scale this now. Absolutely. And, and that, as much as I, as as I kind of painted that as a wee bit of a negative thing about doing it the way I've done mm. it, 
that is one of the positives of it as well, is that I'm sitting back now Do and I'm base. Aye, and I'm mm. figuring out these numbers and going, wait a minute here, I've Foundation actually got job. a load of equity here mm. that I can pull out and fire into another deal, you mm. know, and that, that's and, what I'm in the process of doing. Um, and into a portfolio now that you're actually classed as a portfolio landlord, and yeah, here's yeah. the experience you've got over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's probably where I can accelerate <laughs> um, the, the amount of units that I've got, mm -hmm. you know, so I if, I, if I went balls to the walls in the beginning, I'd maybe be at a position where I get to a certain year and go, shit, I actually need to just hold tight for a couple of years to mm. let these appreciate in value. But I've, I have done it that opposite mm. way where I'm now actually saying, well, I've got some money that I can fire into some more stock. Yeah. East End of Glasgow being where I'm going to be looking for. Aye, absolutely. You know? See you there. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, um, it's just, uh, like, what is your, you're talking about portfolios there, mm -hmm. you know, like, Everyone's talking about portfolios at the moment, you know. So what where can we what can we do to put ourselves in a position where to get one? Where we can get get a decent deal. Because like I'm I always say with the portfolios, right? And maybe I'm wrong. Uh but any I mean we had Pedro in there before, he's you know, potentially selling a portfolio. But he's gonna want top dollar for it. Do you know what I mean? Who's selling you know, twenty five percent below the market value. Who's been an investor and a landlord? Do you know what I, I mean? Know. It's 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 the difficult one because you're dealing with people who are a bit more astute in exactly. business and in property, exactly. right? So, of course, if uh, majority of the people that are selling portfolios are probably people exiting the market, they've been doing it for decades. Older, Old, older or people maybe retiring or. Well, Pedro was saying, obviously, because of his, you know, had a change in circumstances mm -hmm. with health, mm -hmm. uh, with his missus, you mm -hmm. know, that's why they're re-evaluating their mm -hmm. whole thing. Um, and there could be a number of reasons, but mm -hmm. like you say, there will be a lot of just old, tired landlords at the moment. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've I seen one of the stats um, that was published, and it was the amount of young landlords coming in versus the amount of old leaving. Aye. And the amount of young coming in is nowhere near the amount of old that are leaving, Aye. so there's going to be that lag there. It's like there. a new, a new uh, era of tic TikTok landlords. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it. TikTok investors. But on the back of that, I think it's a, it's, it's a numbers game still. You know, because yeah. Yeah. I've got I've got three that I'm trying to negotiate. They're now three decent portfolios. Two of them really good stock. One of them a wee bit less. Okay, but I think there'll be people who are like ten percent of match you're going to get, five percent mm. of match you're going to get. If you can just continue having the conversations with other people and other people, you will get that 15, 20%. Yeah. Everybody wants an all money out deal. At the end of the day, that's yeah. everybody wants that. Yeah. They will come with yeah. the numbers. The, the more and more people you deal with, but. The, 30, me, the 39 we bought was the, the same. The guy only started off with a 10% discount. Mm -hmm. two, a year and a half, two years later, he's at 28%. And, and this is the thing, it it's works. the persistence. Mm -hmm. right? If you, if, yeah. again, if you can systemize it and go, all right, I've spoke to him in January of 2024. Yeah. I'll hit him back up again in six months' time. Mm. I'll hit him up in six months' time again. <clears> you you know? think that the investor would be harder to negotiate with, but technically it's not because mm -hmm. let's just use your Boffville example because it's right in my head right now. If, if you buy it for eighty-two thousand two hundred pound, mm -hmm. and ten years later it's worth one hundred and sixty grand, you go something happens in your personal life, business life, and you need to raise some cash right now. Yeah. How much you sell me that Boffville for? Yeah, exactly. Bear in mind it's cash flowed you for ten years. Yeah. Great capital appreciation. And you look at it from a, a home owner occupier. That you're looking at going, but my house is worth one hundred sixty grand, and I'm one hundred sixty grand. Have no, you're going. Do you know what? I'll take one hundred forty grand. Get, I'll yeah. get a wee yeah. discount off. I'm happy to move on because mm -hmm. I've, it's cashed me for all these years. I've not done a single thing to it. It was the way it is now. Ran already, yeah. Go. There's no motion to it. Mm -hmm. So I find at the opposite. I find talking to landlords and investors so much easier because mm -hmm. they look at it from a numbers point of view. Mm -hmm. Look, you can justify them and then if you start breaking down okay you've got what size of the portfolio are you looking at how many units uh six at least so you, you're looking at six units if you were to evict each tenant mm -hmm. lose that rental income then market them mm -hmm. then tar them up stage them spend money on them you've, yep. uh, during the whole time you've lost all that income mm -hmm. and then you're going to pay legal fees then you're going to pay your selling costs like Take take a twenty percent discount, and it works out the same without yeah. the hassle. Mm -hmm. Like you end up spending tens and tens of thousands of pounds. So when you yeah. put it to a, a landlord or an investor like that, they, they get it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah. And what's the motivation for you going down the portfolio route? Then is it just to save the six percent ADS? Because by the time you find a portfolio of six or more units, you could probably have bought six units. The, this is the thing: is that I keep I'm getting single units thrown at me two, three, four times a day that I would buy. You know, and I'm seeing things that I would buy. Um, two reasons. Number one, the ADS is a massive mm -hmm. is a massive motivation, right? 
a, a sit back in here in Scotland and go, I remember it was 3%, now it's 6%, now it's going to be 7%, 8%, what's going to happen? Obviously, Scotland hates yeah. landlords in terms of the government, right? But um, that's a big, big push for it. But also, it, for me now, the fact that I'm able to get these kind of further advances in equity releases of that um, that amount of equity that I've built up in the, the properties, like capital I'm just thinking to myself, I need quicker acquisition, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? If I, I don't want to do another 10 years yeah, worth of I one unit, sense. two units a year, I can go quicker and I can yeah. grow quicker. And yeah. if I've got the capital there and it makes sense, then why not? Well, if you, you release know? 200 grand, for instance, from mm -hmm. your portfolio, if you pull that cash out, you're going to be paying interest on that debt straight away. So the mm -hmm. quicker you buy you buy one cash that's in the back, buy another one, buy another one, buy another mm -hmm. one, takes you two or three years, you're paying interest in that. But if you buy six or seven or eight all at once for that 200 grand, you're instantly cash flow, which covers your debt and more. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, so you can scale. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing as well, even with the portfolio side of things, um, I had a conversation with Sam and he said, see when you buy the six, what about just selling one? Right. And that was so foreign to me. I was like, at oh, six and you've got six and that's yeah. it. But then you're like, wait a minute, if you get a really good deal and then you can sell one at a really good price, you've massively brought down yeah, the, the, amount that, the amount that you're left. You're yeah. with that, just, you know? I just don't see, I just don't yeah. see many out there. I know everyone. That's the, the first thing. The first thing depends, yeah, you're, depends you're looking for. The first yeah. thing everybody asks when they come to a networking event is, "Oh, how do you talk about portfolios? <sighs> like, where can we get these portfolios?" <sighs> like, I don't know. Like, Are they all money out as well? Out, right today, right? If you and Sam set out today and said we're going to buy in our portfolio and we need to get it at twenty five percent below market value, how quickly do you, you know? Like, how quickly do you think you could find one? A month? Yeah. yeah. Two. Uh, I'll set you a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't he? Don't he? Don't he? I argue with him all constantly. He's yeah. wanting a bad out of portfolio, and I'm saying, no, I'm fucking not. This is my, right, this is my 40th year. Okay, I'm here. So I'm enjoying myself. Challenge, right? My challenge Go is I've it. got to buy one property this year, right? One buy to let. I'm just going to buy this. Jesus Christ, that's got some uh, low barrier to entry, is it not? Well, for me, I've not bought anything for, for two years. So all right, right, okay. Stable, mate. right. <laughs> for him, he's got to buy another portfolio in the next 10 months at 25% below market yes. value. <laughs> I've got no inclination to know. But, but I think... Why? <laughs> you need to talk it up, mate. You've got a community of hungry property investors here. Yeah, yeah. We look like for you for inspiration, mate. We, we, need, we need to I see this. I can't talk it down, mate. You do need to keep it Do you know what? I'll, I'll tell you why, right? Because if you just look at the top of my email list here... He's the you, honest you, dude. UFC 300 tickets were bought last uh, on Thursday. I'm going to Vegas oh, in April. Go. I'm going to take my daughter to the post. She doesn't listen to that podcast because it does come up on our YouTube then again. Yep. Uh, um, take her to Disneyland. Uh, and I'm taking my wife to Rome in May. You're loving it. You're loving I, I've, I've, I don't know why I set this goal, a stupid goal in my head years and years ago. Oh, this fucking heart, like the, the 20 year old days you've done yep. for years and years and years going, the year I hit 40, I'm retiring. Well, you know I'm never going to fucking retire. Mm -hmm. But this year I'm at least enjoying it. I'm going to fucking yeah. spend it. I'm not, I'm not even told my, mother, my brother. I've, Got the UFC have tickets. you been to Disneyland before? No, oh, that's a fucking nightmare. I've no, been to the Forest with a couple of times. Right. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this like year, <laughs> and then then I'm going to be dying at the <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm having a laugh. It's amazing. You'll absolutely love it. It's it's really good, but you'll walk forty thousand steps, and you'll be fucking roasting my, constantly. My wife, right? My missus, she is proper in it. I mean, she gets a total high from it. She's oh, really? buzzing. <laughs> And I'm like having to bring myself up. I'm going, right, come on, I need to do this. Pause it, pause it. And I'm just like, you know me, I'm just fucking miserable a lot of the time. Like, so I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll three hour queue. Right, exactly. Fuck off. How do you get excited about that? <laughs> For, to stand a three hour huh. queue? Well, you just need to do it like everybody fuck else. It. Fake it. Just fake yeah. it. You have to. Uh, it's, it's, or you can pay fast passes and all that. I'm too tired. I'm, I'm a fighter, remember. I highly recommend. At the end of the day, you kind of get a picture of your Mickey Mouse with a fucking frown on your face. That's that's sacrilege, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's where it stops, is that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, no portfolio purchase for me this year. Aye. I'll I'll leave them for Andrew. I'll, 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 I'll happily take him with that. But but that's the thing I think as well. Um you also need to live a bit. Yeah. You know, and it's there's been a conversation before about as much as you have to work hard and this and that. You don't want to then go, oh, I've missed 10 years out of buying nice car you know what I mean the yeah. thing with the car like Sam talking about yeah. the car previously is like I got an M5 because I, I, I had to what you know, do you like, like yeah. spend your money on or do you I've got I, a nice big Range Rover out there right. um, get the business. do you get, do you get no, satisfaction unfortunately, no. do you like the cars that, that's my thing um, 
I'm, I'm in terms of clothes. I'm not a big uh, clothes guy. I don't spit other than you'll see the night. I've got a fucking shirt that will be. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a shirt that's loud, right? I've got a shirt that's loud in my out. car, right? I need, I need to come. As, I'm not a this is wealth member, but I'm just coming. Get, get, get here just, for the shirt. I'll pay okay. for the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming to the Kong tonight. But the, so I, I'm not. I'm not a big clothes guy. Um, I don't spend. I spend a lot of money when I'm out eating. So if uh, I'm out eating, if we go out uh, for a meal. I'll order one of everything and I'll yeah. leave a quarter, like, right? I like spending money on food. That, that's yeah, the yeah. thing, it's don't, an experience. I don't, I don't grudge it as long as it's, it's good, good food. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's good food. <laughs> but my cars are my kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So um, back in the day, I had it. My very first car I ever had was a Mercedes C180 Classic with 250,000 miles on it. All so right. Everybody had we done up courses and this and that. I'm in an old man C180 Classic. <laughs> Fucking loved it, right? Um, that's quite a strange first car. It's like. a super strange yeah, car, right? Strange. Next car was a C230 Sport. Did I get you the birds? <laughs> I was actually seeing a bird at that well, time. I was she thought, I get you the bird, but they think you're a serial killer or something. She, she thought it was weird. She didn't uh, think it was weird at the time. But uh, like, this, Jeeps. Is, this is turning into another one of those chest puffing <laughs> podcasts, mate. Uh, we're talking about but the Trump Alpha Bugs podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's not getting many women uh, guests after this, but uh, well, stop listening. <laughs> like uh, ca- cars are my thing. Cars are my thing. You know, but. Again, you kind of sit back and you go, "How silly do you want to be yeah. in terms of your purchases?" You know, you know what I mean, as opposed sorry. to <laughs> as a, as opposed to being a bit like conservative and this yeah. and that, you know. Um, but I do like cars. Uh, so if you know get any female members in your group that will come on the podcast, yes, there's a few. Yeah, there, there must be a few enough. ready to go for uh, that, you know. Right. So we need to. Def- Laura Crawford's we, volunteered to come on, but yeah, we wouldn't be able to shut her up if she came on your own. She'd be great. She's uh, she's she's <laughs> loads of, loads of stories. I'm sure. Um, the because we got a complaint. We got a complaint on our know. YouTube channel that it was, uh, oh no, it was just a bit of banter. But she's like, ah, come on, guys, puff your chest out a bit more, match your podcast or something like that. Try we and did get some go, females. We didn't go out at that time, didn't we? <laughs> that episode of Taylor. <laughs> it's it, it's uh, 2024 is uh, you know, the world's mental, right? I, I know they're having a laugh, obviously, with saying that, uh, right? But you just have to pick your pick who you are. Like, see, yeah. for me, obviously, I, I, I hold a lot of hats with like the government contracts and this and that. Yeah. But see if I believe something and I believe it, I don't care. Yeah. Like I'm I'm gonna double down yourself. on it. See, like during obviously the, the big C word thing and all that happening, I had some views on it and I wasn't willing to pull back on them. I had some views with what the government doing, I wasn't I willing to hold back on people it. Like that, and then I'm I'm willing to lose money. Yeah, to yeah. keep the views. That's you know like, what I mean? Keep your own moral that. compass. Where you believe that, you know? I think we're all that. Uh, to be honest, we, we probably say far too much in this podcast. Like, oh, definitely. Uh, people know my bank account balance now as well. I used to get the fucking meta shit used to get in during the first lockdown mm-hmm. when um, I obviously, I, I probably did what most people did, but I did it for nine or ten days painting the fence, getting a wee suntan. Yeah. And now you probably thought, fuck Spend this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Aye, this fucking, this yeah, world yeah. is in, sh- you know, <laughs> shut down for the first time in history. I'm taking an opportunity. So I, I kept going and contacting all the, I'm going to give you some secrets here, the the part exchange house builders. Mm-hmm. going Because I knew that they had started to sell their stock. They, yep. The construction site was still going. Their houses were still getting built, but they couldn't sell their stock. Absolutely. So I was fucking turning up to all the, the, the part exchange managers' houses in Aberdeen, picking up a bag full of fucking keys, going and viewing them, putting them on Instagram story. Man, dogs abuse I'd get. How are you in lockdown viewing properties? How are you seeing view properties? And I was like, fuck you. But then yeah. what happened with it? All the, you know, the two or three months later when the market opened back up, there was 18 deals sourcing mm-hmm. stuff going through the, the uh, conveyance. And I was like, I never really listened to it. I thought, no, this is my, I'm, I'm running my fucking business. No one's telling me yeah. to dictate to me when I can go out the house when I can't. Never happened. The, the majority of people that are negative on social media are the loud few. Yeah. It's not the loud many. No, you know, the, the people who are like, you shouldn't be this, yeah. it's, it's the loud few. What you do know? you like with marketing, uh, social media for your businesses and all that? Do you take in, do with that or do you can outsource that? Or? Um, so I take quite a decent amount to do with the um, social media ads as an example. I know you were talking about that earlier on. Um, I feel as though I'm very good at getting ad results, you know, so run Can a lot of lead ads, things like that, mm-hmm. spend thousands yeah. of pounds a month on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. that. for the gym or just both? For, for the gyms, as yeah. it stands just now. Um, I probably will push it more into the property side yeah. when, I, when I start to kind of push that more, but um, I, I understand it a lot. And, yeah. you know, you guys you guys know what it's like with uh, social media. See, so trying to understand Facebook ads is like a qualification on its own mm-hmm. because it's so complex, it changes... There's so many things to know. There'll be a lot of skills that you'll be bringing over from the business life into the property, like you say, even to something like understanding Facebook ads for mm-hmm. you. If you want, if you really want to attract your portfolio, you can probably run an ad. Yeah, 
better than we could to go and run it because that's a skill set you've developed mm-hmm. um, yeah. to, to get it. So the, the, there's, there's things that I think people are kind of good at and things that people are bad at. And I think that social media has to be something that pretty much everybody in any sector has to be good at yeah. nowadays. You know, yeah. the world ran on it, mm. essentially, yeah. you know. So my, my whole thing was... Social I media to, for me is like, it's like just word of mouth now for the business. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, like, it's word of mouth, right? Definitely for you. And, and you'll build a great business and reputation for that. Uh, but see if you knew how to build predictable lead flow and sales and predictable mm-hmm. numbers for it, you would look mm-hmm. at it completely differently and right. go, wait a minute here. I know if I put in one pound, it's going to get me back X. I see. I've, not, I've done a few Facebook ad campaigns and that for various different things, but... Mm-hmm. I've never really given it a proper chance. Mm-hmm. And I know you need to do it. You need to do it for a bit, like six months or something like that until you start maybe seeing results and uh, that. You, you, just have to, you just have to understand it. And that's the uh, hard part because mm-hmm. it is, like I, I know for a fact if we acquire, our cost of acquisition is 28 quid to acquire a customer through the gym side mm-hmm. of things. And we've got a lifetime value of 1,500 quid. So every 28 yeah. quid that I put in, I'm getting back 1,500 quid. Mm-hmm. How did you understand it? Did you do a course or did you just YouTube, just learn about it? I set myself a goal in 2022 to learn Facebook ads and the UK tax laws a lot better than I do. That was, that was, that was the thing. I was like, New Year's resolution, Facebook ads and uh, the UK tax laws and I just immersed myself into it. Podcasts, and everything, YouTube, books, so. fucking Aye. literally books, tax books, you know what I mean? Just loads of stuff just going through it. And um, I just learned it and kind of upskilled on it, you know. Um, so when you've got something in your head, you... Aye, I'm I a just, bit like I just need to too. figure it out. See, Aye. see, like with tax and such, mm. right? As much as we've all got accountants, right? Mm. I also would like to understand what's happening. Yeah, you know, I, I said this in the group before. There's a big difference between an accountant and a tax advisor, mm. and I think that everyone should have both. You know, because accountants will do the books and this and that, but a tax advisor goes, "Here's the smart thing you can mm. do, and here's how you can do it legally." And X, Y, Z, you know. Um, any good tax oh, tips? I always find that you've got to understand <laughs> that yourself. Yeah, <laughs> pay is uh, number one. <laughs> know, one, of, one of the things is, uh, what was I going to say? My it's mind's just gone He's going to try and give some tax advice and then thought I'd have a financial know. advice. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need to watch where we go with this. Because uh, that is why uh, I employ it's, it's a funny thing though that you, as much as you think your accountant and your tax advisor should be giving you that advice, it's almost like you have to understand it to prompt them in the direction. Can I get away with that? Can I push that? How, yeah. how much can I push it? What can I stretch it? And then, then, then the conversation starts flowing. But if you mm-hmm. don't have that basic, that good knowledge, basic knowledge mm-hmm. and develop it, you can't have that conversation in the first place. Do Most account, so my accountant's brilliant. Has been, I've got an accountant for all the businesses that's been there for years, right? But most accountants work off of a specific fee, mm. right? See if those accountants worked off of a specific percentage of what they're saving you or this or that, mm. they would be far more yeah. incentivized to yeah. go, hod the bus, we can do X, Y, Z here. Yeah. I get paid more, you get paid more, yeah. you know? And that's why, like, I, I don't know, um, obviously you're set up with the estate agency side of things or anybody else's, but when you look at, say, a state agent, as an example, if I'm an estate agent and I'm charging a percentage rather than a fixed fee, I probably would be a bit more incentivized to try and get a higher cost of cost, sale yeah. so that I can make a better fee, yeah. you know? That's the other thing that kind of annoys me is, like, I'm quite driven to build the business, but I'm also not driven to pay more tax as well, if I can help <laughs> it. So, like, I'm thinking to myself, well, do I really want to get to a bigger scale? Because if I then need to extract even more money, right? So you, between you and your partner, right, you can get about 100k out, mm-hmm. relatively tax low mm-hmm. tax yeah. tax efficient. Mm-hmm. Like, and you can lead a pretty decent lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Do you want to start going over that and paying 48% tax or whatever it is? Do you know what I mean? I know, I know. Like, it, it's, it's what you want, isn't it, at the end of the day? But, like... I remember back with the, the fitness businesses back in the day, it was like, uh, oh, that you've got a thing in the fitness industry called flat rate, which is like 8.5% you're paying for that specific sector. Other sectors have got the same. But uh, instead of paying 20% VAT, you're paying 8.5% VAT. And I remember when we broached past that 8.5% and we were having to go to 20, and it was a big thing like, oh, shit, we're going to have to try and pay 125 or 12 odd percent more VAT on an industry that we can't extract it because it's a service-based industry. Oh, right, yeah. We're not buying a load of products, you know. That's but it then fucking you annoys just have me to that go... so many industries, like you said, the fitness industry gets away with 8% VAT and the pro- residential property still gets fucking hammered with VAT. We can't claim it back. We can't charge it on our rent. We can't charge it on our sale price, but we can't uh, hey, here's, pay it. Here's one to even set you back even worse and from my side of things. <laughs> if I'm a physio or if I'm doing something like a chiropractor, I pay zero VAT. Because I'm 
helping take the strain off the health service. Is, it, uh, is that zero what? VAT? Zero VAT. Really? Gyms. We get VAT. Yeah. What are we doing? Fuck I, yeah. So the fitness industry's yeah. always pushed at that. Rates. You'll need saying to pay like, rates as well, eh? Business rates. Yeah. Pay fortunes and business that's rates. That's got to be a fortune. So man. rather than exchange as an example, we've got the shopping centre in there. The fact that's a shopping centre location, as much as think thing what you want at Rutherland, for, for us being a small business, being inside a shopping centre is a biggie, right? We pay fortunes and rates. Yeah, Absolute yeah. fortunes. And at the end of the day, what do you really get? And then yeah. you just think to yourself, what do you well, what, get? exactly. You could be employing another <laughs> two people for that. Two, 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 two people two per people. month, yeah. easily. You're, easily. It's just, uh, it's, it makes you mad. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to property stuff, then just to finish off, mm-hmm. uh, where do you see your kind of. We had a guest in earlier team where he was talking about his tick boxes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, where are you seeing things going for you in property? So, I would say this year specifically, I've got three things I'll look at. Two things I'll look at, to be honest. Um, I went through all my recent stuff there with the redress scheme, uh, redress scheme and the ICOs and this and that and got everything there in place because I'd, I'd sourced a few properties yeah. and I completed on them recently, right? And I thought, oh, there's a business in there. There's deals that I wouldn't be buying for myself, single units if That's I'm focused on these mm-hmm. portfolios. I'm getting a discount, I'm negotiating with the vendor, pass it on, you know. So I've got a couple of guys that I sourced it down in London and Newcastle and one up in Inverness that I just took on there as well. I'll I'll do more sourcing as well, but I also like the fact that I've came to it from a stage of buying loads of properties. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not just going, oh, yeah, I source yeah. properties and I don't own yeah, any. Yeah. I'm like, no, I've had skin the in the game about, for 10 years here. Uh, you've not you just know? come off the back of a weekend course. It, and, exactly. Uh, I, uh, people are more like, yeah. And, and that's where I go, right, I'm going to do more sourcing, um, but I also feel as though I want to end the year on 20 units in yeah. some way, you know, so if I live in the now, I want to finish on 20 at the end of the year, so that's a big push to get at least that first mm-hmm. six and go, right, okay, we need another three to finish, you know, um, and for me, as I say, looking at it and saying I want uh, 30 units by 2030, I'm now like, no, I actually want 50, 60, 70, 80 plus, you know whether that be a mix of residential and commercial, um, who knows, but my property business will be way bigger than any other businesses I've got. Good, but that's and it's interesting, I mean, scale, talking about scale and the headaches as well that's, that comes with scale and mm-hmm. property as well, because we know, like I know as well, imagine 260 properties, how much maintenance we, we do, do you know what I mean? You're up in Aberdeen there, Fixing roofs and stuff like that, putting out buckets <laughs> to cash the trucks. <laughs> and it does Taking become a headache, mushrooms. right? You're, look, you're looking for a full time maintenance uh, guy just to go around your flats up there. Yeah, just looking at the needs of the business. People going, don't really yeah. think yeah. that there's an ongoing, you know, yeah. it's not just you accumulate this big pro, uh, portfolio and then that's it. That's it's it. just a cash cow. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I, I, I think when you realise that it's just all part of the game, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's just all part of the yeah. game. Yeah. Like I, I had a, I had a tenant, um, only other bad tenant I've had. You just went through a, a tribunal. Mm. I've just went through one right. uh, not that long ago, right? And long story short, went on for far too long, right? Everybody hates landlords, went on far too long got to the stage where the tribunal are like, do you know what? You've done everything correct. You went through the process. We're awarding you nine grand. The guy owed me like 15, 16. We're awarding you nine grand. I was like, I've won. I've done the right thing. I went uh-huh. through the process. Nine grand. Week later, I get an accountant and bankruptcy letter with the person's name on it. That 9,000 pound that he owed you. Bush. No kiss chance. It. No chance. I'm explaining it to my missus who's a school teacher and she's like, how are you so all right with this? Uh, and how is that yeah. legal? And I says, because it's the game. Uh, just got to keep going. You just have Carrying. to understand it's <laughs> yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah. You know? You've got a good head for it, mate. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's funny. I looked at some of the last few days was you're only as big as the problems that you face and you solve. Mm-hmm. And before when I used to like come across a problem like that, yeah, people are like, how, how can you be so blasé and relaxed mm-hmm. with that? Because if you let all the th- things like that bother you, you wouldn't fucking push on and, and, and move on. And I, I got a big roof repair up in Aberdeen a few weeks ago. And I was like, fucking scaffolding cost and this kind of shit. And I remember we were just driving past, I was going up, uh, past Perth and I saw this building and it must have been like about 100 fucking metres long and they're <laughs> scaffolding up the whole way, five stories high and I was like, I think I've got a problem. That guy's got a fucking bigger fucking problem. Mate, but that's right. a massive problem. Look at the size of that. It was like a big, huge, massive office block and I'm thinking, that's a, that's a roof leak. Oh yeah. That's a roof. Like, yeah. well, that's when it builds up the economies of scale as well because if yeah. you've only got two or three properties and you get that non paying tenant, then you've Different got an issue. Story. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But Different once story. you get the bigger level, then you can absorb that. But but do you not also think that the, the shitty parts are good in the sense that see your next tribunal, you'll be like, Oh, I've dealt with it before, I understand yeah. how to deal with it. See see when you sat your first member of staff, think think of what it was like when you had to have the conversation first. Deal. You're thinking about it, you're shitting yourself uh, and that. Or a member of staff leaves. 
mm-hmm. and you're so worried about it. See when you've done it two, three, four, five, however many times oh, you go, 100%. oh, that's what it is. Uh, that's when I became a letting agent. There you um, go, I was dreading phoning up tenants and mm-hmm. explaining to them that the rent was going to jump up. I, I was getting stressed about yeah, that. Exactly. It's just like, I've <laughs> okay. yeah. no bother at all. Yeah, yeah, I it's automate like, that response every I, year. I, I, and it's just part of the business. That's it. Yeah. Right. And you're absolutely the more, right. A very good point. Mm-hmm. And the more mm-hmm. you immerse yourself in it and understand that, then it's just, that is what it is. There's no real great, there's no real bad. There's just, yeah. you know. That's it. I've so enjoyed, I mean, you really it. enjoyed the conversation, mate. And, uh, absolutely. Talking, yeah, no, thank you very much. Talking about general business and that as well. And, Look, you've you've done a lot. Let's, and, uh, let's get Andrew back on in a year's time. See if you've got to hit that goal of the portfolio. I know it's out there in the ether. Like, I can't, I can't go away for it. Right. We'll I've only, I've only twenty-five percent, guys. Come hit me up. I'm I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> and I've only got one. I've only got one to buy. One buy to let. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in the uh, Coyers for a, a coffee one time. Yeah, up yes, indeed. I am always there. I'm always there every Friday. <laughs> and uh, where can people reach out to you to follow the journey? Yeah. Uh, so the the property side of things, um, I just started the Instagram and Facebook and uh, YouTube account called Andrew McGee Investor. So if you at Andrew McGee Investor. Mm-hmm. Um, everything will go in there. Um, catch me on LinkedIn just as I you. Loved it. Nice. Uh, yeah. Look out for that EU stew. EU stew. Bring, bring that <laughs> EU stew. Do tag Andrew in the EU stew again. I have PTSD. <laughs> well, mate, cheers. Cheers, right, thank, you. thank you, guys.